Hi, everybody. Welcome to Church at Home. If we've never met before, my name is Luke. I'm on our pastoral team, and we're so glad that you can join us today. We're so glad, actually, that we can join one another, not just online anymore, but increasingly uh, in person. There's been lots of ways that our church has been gathering the last number of weeks, both in Sundays and throughout the week. And we wanna invite you to continually find out how to get connected, to, to be together uh, personally, physically, in, in person. It's still at times weird to say, but it's possible and it's, and it's happening. So please visit our website to discover all the ways that we're connecting on Sundays and throughout the week. There's lots of ways to get connected. And if you have any questions, please reach out. That's what we're here for. We're here uh, to help. This week and next week are two special weeks at church at home. We're calling this Summer Refresh. And Summer Refresh is simply about recognizing that over the past while, we might feel now a little bit weary. There's definitely a lot of excitement about, but there also could be a weariness in our spirit. And we need Jesus to refresh us through his Holy Spirit. At one point, we read in the Gospel of John that Jesus says this, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. Now, obviously, the name of our church is Living Waters Church, and it comes from this passage. It comes from a belief that Jesus loves us, that Jesus sustains us, that Jesus gives us his Holy Spirit to refresh and enliven us. And that's what we're hoping for over the next couple of weeks. So today, Reuben Kramer is sharing, and he's gonna be talking about being refreshed in prayer. Next week, we have a guest speaker joining us for Church at Home, and that's Elise Brower. She was an intern here years ago, and now she's a pastor in Surrey, and doing a whole bunch of other things as well. And she's gonna be talking about being refreshed in scripture. So this week, refreshed in prayer. Next week, refreshed in scripture. Our prayer is that over this summer, we as a community would be refreshed by Jesus through his Holy Spirit. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna to be led in music. We're then gonna hear Reuben share, and then Reuben's gonna pray a blessing on our community as we close our service. One more invitation. Please reach out if you have any questions. We love you, we're with you, and we're so thankful that we can be refreshed by Jesus together. Okay. 
church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not live and shall not fade. By His blood and in His name, it is freedom by and free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who is resurrected.
Hi there, my name is Ruben and I'm part of the pastoral team here at Living Waters Church. Today I get to share with you the first part of a mini two-part series that we're doing called Summer Refresh. And I love that I get the chance to share in this series, especially with the name Refresh. At this time of year with the weather being warmer and different fun activities and traveling that we get to do, uh, Refresh is the perfect word for us to focus on uh, this time. When I think about Refresh, it brings me back to uh, memories as a child, especially the fun things that we got to do in the summer. And one thing that I just absolutely loved to do was go to the lake with my family. Growing up in Victoria, there was a lake called Thetis Lake uh, that my family always went to, but uh, we weren't the kind of family that would go to the beach and fight the crowds and try to find a spot. Uh, we would always hike up along the side of the lake and find more of a remote spot, whether it was a cliff edge or, or a quiet space along the water that we would set up at and go swimming from there. And I loved that space. I loved the heat of the summer, setting up with my family and jumping into the lake. And uh, there's nothing like the feeling of a warm day, uh, being in a quiet space on a big body of water and jumping in and being immersed by that water and having the freedom to swim around and dive down and, and, uh, and just enjoy that space. Uh, that's a, a memory that I'll never forget and something that I still enjoy as an adult today. And so as I speak today about being refreshed in prayer, that image of, of jumping into a lake on a hot summer day comes to me because I couldn't think of a better way to describe being refreshed. And so I'm gonna invite you to, to come along with me today as I share a little bit about my own personal journey in prayer. And, uh, and we're gonna look at a few pieces of scripture to guide us in that. And so what does it look like to be refreshed in prayer? Firstly, through prayer, we can be refreshed by the living water. Jesus used the imagery of water a few times in the Gospels, and one of the times that he uses that imagery is talking about living water. Let me read from you for you from John 7, 37 to 39. It says, On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And when he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone who believed in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. As Christ followers, we are given the Holy Spirit, the living water to drink from and to have flow through us. The Holy Spirit empowers us and encourages us and bears fruit in our lives. The Holy Spirit is present and Jesus invites us to drink from that living water. As we spend time in prayer, we find refreshment when we ask the Holy Spirit to work in us and to speak to us. It is such an important part of our prayer lives. This past June, at the very end of the month, we experienced uh, a pretty intense heat wave. And uh, for about three days there, we saw weather that we'd never seen before. And uh, our house uh, does not have air conditioning. And uh, no matter how many fans we were able to find and plug in, uh, it didn't seem to really do much. And uh, the temperature in our home ended up getting up to about 32 or 33 degrees for a few days straight. And uh, it's, it's not great when you're outside and you're hot and you go inside and you're hot. And there's just no respite at all from that heat. And I have to admit, uh, when it's hot like that, 
I am not a nice person to be around. Uh, I know my family uh, recognized that pretty quickly. I don't think I was the greatest husband or father at times uh, when I was feeling that hot. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a good look on me. And so through that heat wave, uh, I had to do whatever I could to try to find um, some refreshing from that heat, uh, whether it was a, a glass of water, uh, whether it was uh, dunking myself in an inflatable kiddie pool in our backyard, uh, or just going for a drive to nowhere just so I could sit in the AC that our van had to offer. And, uh, and I noticed a difference when I was able to find those spaces to cool down. I, I wasn't as agitated. Uh, I was more patient and I wasn't as short with my kids or uh, grumpy or just, just not nice <laughs> when I was able to cool down. And uh, that's exactly what, what Jesus is explaining here uh, about the living water, the Holy Spirit. He says, he says if you are thirsty, Come and drink and you will be refreshed. The Holy Spirit will come and bring change to you. And I have to admit that also this past year, uh, for me, and I'm sure for many of us, is, has not been easy. And there have been times in this past year where um, I've been afraid, I've been anxious, I've been angry and frustrated. Uh, and I've also just not really felt that close to God. There have been many challenges that have forced this to happen. And in that time, I very much felt like that thirsty person, that person who felt dry and distant, just like I did in that heat wave, just wasn't myself. And I needed the Holy Spirit to come and bring transformation to my life. And when I was able to find those moments, when I was able to go and, and spend time in prayer and spend time with with the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to fill me and change me, that's when things really changed for me in those seasons, those times this year when I was feeling scared and anxious and worried and, and angry about what was going on around us. The Holy Spirit will bring us peace and will relieve us from our burdens in those times when we're feeling dry and distant from God. And I'm sure many of you can probably connect to that feeling over this last year, the same feeling that I had. And so I encourage you that if you feel dry, if you feel thirsty, distant from God, to create space in your day to spend with him, to be in prayer, to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you for that living water to quench your thirst. And it's as simple as going for a walk, finding a quiet space in your home, or just getting out in his creation in the quiet, just to be with him and to drink from that living water. Through prayer, the Holy Spirit can bring refreshing to our hearts. Secondly, prayer can also refresh us to bear fruit. Psalm chapter one is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. And I think it's because it's something that is always really connected to me and I've seen uh, to be so true in my life. Let me read the first three verses of that chapter to you. It says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with the mockers but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. When describing what it's like to be deeply connected to God and to be in his word and to spend time with him, the psalmist uses the image of a tree planted next to a riverbank. It is a tree that bears fruit in each season, not withering, but prospering. Meditating on God's word is a way that we can pray. It's a great way to spend time reflecting on his character, who he is, what his plans are for him, and how much he loves us. And in this scripture, water isn't just a metaphor. It is truly the source of life. 
My family and I, we have a, a community garden here in Fort Langley uh, that we got about four or five years ago. And uh, when we first got this garden, we really had no idea what we were doing. Uh, we had no gardening experience. Uh, a lot of the plants that we owned in our home uh, never really made it. And so this venture was a, uh, a bit of a new thing for us. And uh, uh, a little exciting, but also pretty scary. And so when we first began, uh, we had no idea where to start. And so we actually bought this uh, this one foot by one foot square plastic thing that you'd press down into the soil and poke holes in and drop the seeds in because we had no idea where the seeds had to go, how far apart they were supposed to be from each other. And this thing was really, you know, kind of the, uh, the gardening guide for dummies because uh, it did everything for you. And I remember when we first started using this, uh, there were other gardeners who obviously were very experienced looking over us, pressing this plastic square into our garden and thinking, what are those people doing? And, uh, and you know, we've, we've had some successes, but we've had some failures in that garden. Uh, and over the years, it's gotten better and better. But uh, probably the greatest thing uh, about having this garden has been planting these seeds and involving our children in that and uh, and then watering that garden. We did all the work to prepare it, to put the seeds down, but when we watered that garden, over time, seeing those plants grow and seeing those vegetables come to life was exciting. And uh, the best moments are when our family sits down at our table and we're eating the vegetables from our garden. Our kids get so excited, They're like, we grew these, like we're eating these and we grew them. They didn't just come from a grocery store. And, uh, and they love watching the water bring life to those things in our garden. And that's exactly what this verse is talking about. You know, not only does that water bring life, but it securely roots us so that we can stand the storms of life. So we can get through times like this past year. It also produces fruit. When we spend time with God, when we're in his word, when we are refreshed in prayer, we see fruit come out of our lives. And Paul mentions that fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, which we know are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. These are all very good things that we need in our lives. And these are things that I needed in that heat wave. So my family did not uh, get too bothered by me. And, uh, and these are things that our world needs. Our world needs to experience love and joy, patience. Right now, our world needs kindness and goodness. And when we plant our roots in that living water, when the Holy Spirit brings transformation to our lives, we see that fruit. And that fruit can bring change, not just to us, but the, to those around us. There's great fruit that comes from setting aside time to spend with God, to meditate on his truth, to speak to him, and to listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. And that leads me into my final point. Uh, when we spend time in prayer to be refreshed, we also have the chance to refresh others. When I was swimming in the lake as a child with my family, it was fun to jump in on my own and swim around, but it got even better when I was able to call my sisters and my parents to come and jump into the lake with me. And that brought so much more joy, and it was just that much better when I was able to invite others into what I was experiencing. And we need to remember that this living water, this transformation that the Holy Spirit brings to our lives when we meet Jesus is not just something for us to experience and to hold on to. This is something that we're called to share with others, to invite others into. And, you know, this last year, we've experienced many people drifting from their faith, questioning what they believe. I've had a lot of conversations with people who don't know Jesus asking, you know, what is the purpose of my life? What, what is this all about? And they're really seeking to know more about who God is because these challenges we faced this last year have really put things into perspective. And something that I'm learning personally is that prayer is a huge part of how we invite people into that journey to know who Jesus is. 
I find that it's so easy for me just to rely on my own strengths and giftings or, or programs and the church or whatever it may be uh, to call people on to that journey with Jesus. Uh, but what I miss so many times is, you know, I hang out with people and I connect with people, um, but I ask myself, when was the last time I actually prayed for these people in my life who don't know Jesus? Prayer should be the foundation of evangelism. We need to start with prayer and then allow the Holy Spirit to lead us from there. When we take time to pray for people in our lives who aren't believers, that's when God really begins to work. That's when the Holy Spirit starts to put words on our heart to encourage them with or, or ideas on how we can love them and invite them into that journey. The Holy Spirit also opens up doors and opportunities for us to have conversations and to, to encourage those people who don't know Jesus when they're asking those questions and when they're asking about life and purpose. It can't be all on us to create those spaces. When we pray and when we ask the Holy Spirit to do those things, those opportunities will come and we can invite others to be refreshed just as we have. We are surrounded by people every day who are desperate to be quenched by that living water. They may not even know it exists, but they're thirsty, they're dry, they're lonely, and they're asking those questions. And we can offer that drink to them. So as we spend time in prayer, let's ask the Holy Spirit to put people on our hearts. Ask him who we can pray for and who we can invite into that experience of drinking the living water, that experience of knowing Jesus and having this Holy Spirit transform our lives and give us purpose in life. Who can we call to on the rocks to come and jump into the lake with us? And if you don't really know how that may look like for you, maybe that's something that doesn't come easy for you, please feel free to reach out. Send me an email. I'd love to talk to you and have a conversation with you about that. Any of our pastoral team would love to. And our church also has amazing opportunities to invite people in, uh, whether it's into life groups or alpha groups, which are gonna be starting this fall. There's great ways for us to journey with others, but it has to begin with prayer. And so as I wrap up, I just want to ask a few questions. How do you feel right now? Do you feel dry? Do you long to see more of God's fruit in your life? Or are you just longing to experience that living water again because it's been so long? I encourage you to find a space to pray this week and to ask the Holy Spirit to refresh you. In that time, I encourage you to ask yourself, what is God saying to me right now? Who is he putting on my heart? And what can I do about it? So this summer, as we take time to slow down and relax and vacation, sit at the beach, let's consider what it means to be refreshed in prayer. Let's plant our roots in the living water and invite others to come and take a sip too. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us at Church at Home this week. Let me take a moment to pray for you before we finish. Jesus, we thank you that we have this time together to worship and to learn from your word and to talk about what it means to be refreshed in prayer. Lord, this summer, as we have time to slow down a bit, I pray that you just encourage us to take time to be with you, uh, to talk to you and to listen to you and to find moments of quiet just to be in your presence. Lord, we ask you that you help us to continue to grow into people who are hungry and thirsty for your living water, who desire to be transformed by your spirit. And not only that, to share who you are with others around us. That as we're transformed and as we experience the incredible life that you have to offer us, that we want to share that same life with other people. Work in our hearts, Jesus, as we go this week and we find time to pray and we ask you what you're saying to us, when we ask you who you're putting on our hearts, God, I pray that we will take action in what we hear from you. Lord, refresh us today. Let us drink from your living water and go with us 
as we strive to live for you and to be a blessing to the world around us. In your name, amen. Well, I hope you all have a great week. There's lots going on around the church that you can get involved in. Feel free to visit our website at any time to see how you can connect. And we hope you have a great week. See you later.